Hello everyone, I am Dr. Srishti Jain. I am working as the Associate Professor and Additional Director in the Department of Critical Care at Mahatma Gandhi Hospital, Jaipur. I am also the Director of the ECMO Services at our institute. We made our first video to understand that how does ECMO work and what do we actually mean by ECMO and when do our patients need ECMO. The intention of making today's video is to understand our ECMO machine a bit better. For a simple person, our intention today is to understand that how this machine works. So, we need ECMO in two types of patients. One who have a reversible heart failure or those who have a reversible lung failure. For patients who have a reversible heart failure, like for example those who have taken aluminium phosphide overdose or those who have an ischemic cardiomyopathy or any reason because of which they landed up with an acute cardiac failure and we know that the problem is reversible, the ECMO machine actually behaves like a heart outside the body. It's an artificial heart. So what happens is that with the help of two big cannula, one in the neck and one in the leg, the blood is pumped out of the body then the blood is actually pumped out of the body because of the magnetic rotations of the motor pump in the echo machine and when the blood is pumped out it enters into the oxygenator which fits here in the machine in the oxygenator the blood is oxygenated the carbon dioxide is removed and then the blood with the help of the pump is returned back to the body. The settings on the ECMO console help us to adjust the revolutions per minute that means the speed at which the pump will rotate because that will denote that how quickly the blood will come outside the body. When it is used for a heart failure the machine is actually behaving like the artificial heart outside the body and the settings are done depending upon the cardiac output that we have decided that we need to support the other organs of the body. Similarly, in the patients who have reversible lung failure, like the patients, those who have pneumonia, ARDS, COVID lungs, which were very severe, which were not able to be oxygenated just on the ventilator, we needed the ECMO machine. Now, how does this machine help? Again, with the help of the two cannula, which are inserted into two big veins of the body, one in the neck, the blood is pumped out with the help of the machine. This is the pump which sucks the blood out of the body. Then it goes into the oxygenator where the oxygen is added and the carbon dioxide is removed and blood is then brought back to the body through another cannula which can be into one of the big leg veins. And this is how the machine acts like a lung outside the body for those patients who are having a reversible lung failure. That's how the basic physiology of ECMO works and helps the patient. Now another question arises that how long will these patients need the ECMO support? In cases of reversible heart failure, we try to come down on the ECMO support, come down on the rotations as we see on the daily echo reports, the pumping of the heart. As and when the pumping of the heart improves, the urine output of the patient improves, the need for the inotropic and the vasopressor medication reduces, we think that okay the heart is recovering and we can down on the ECMO support and once the patient is on very minimal ECMO support, the supports are removed. Similarly, in case of lung failure patients who need the artificial lung support by the ECMO machine, we have a look at the daily arterial blood gases, we look at the daily chest x-rays, we look at the PO2 by FiO2 ratio on the arterial blood gas and we see that how the lungs are improving. And then we start reducing the sweep gas flow on the oxygenator and the FiO2 of the oxygenator and we see that how the patients are needing less and less of the ECMO support and able to oxygenate their body from their own lungs. Again, very important before we take the patient on ECMO is to assess the reversibility of the situation because reversibility is an extremely important thing. So this was all for today. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you.